guys, welcome to another video. I'm um, covering a question from a reader today, and uh, as usual, I enjoy the letters that I get. I don't mind if they're really long, because what I do is um, I just cut out the main bits to answer the questions. So I appreciate all the feedback that you guys give. Uh, this one says, though I've awoken to the matrix a couple of years ago, I find myself lacking in being able to deal with it sometimes. As in, I still get caught up in all the stress and fear that it creates. I have recovered from cancer uh, this last year through changing my diet and lifestyle. I know that I must change my mental attitude as well. Also, please hint at any videos that you know of that I could watch to understand or see and understand the universe the way you do. I'd love to grasp the multiverse and many other things more clearly, like how the universe is made from love or how we can be in more than one place at one time. So, uh, I'll cover a few points uh, from the start here. Uh, I work into the matrix a couple of years ago, I find myself lacking in being able to deal with it sometimes, as in I still get caught up in the stress and the fear that it creates. So, for those that aren't actually familiar with what the matrix is, the matrix just refers to the life that you're led into and the life that you carry out versus reality, which is the life that we're meant to live and the lives that we're meant to carry out. So, an example of the matrix is, you know, the types of things that people do, like the things that we do, we're, we're um, drawn into consumerism, we're always trying to make more money to buy more things, and we're taught that uh, outside things will fill uh, inner needs or gaps or holes. Um, it's things like, you know, buying into marriage and um, uh, schooling is good, and you go to university to get a job. So, for example, uh, you know, you can be a person that earns huge money, you've been through uni, you've got all these accolades and medals and certificates and uh, savings, you've got a car, a mortgage, a house, you've got kids, you've got all this. You can have all that, but you can still have never lived one day living the purpose of your life. So, the matrix essentially is what keeps you from seeing reality and from seeing the life the way that it is. It's, it's a broad term also, I mean the matrix is made up of many matrices in a lot of different sort of uh, fields of life, but um, the matrix itself refers, refers as a whole to um, keeping you from seeing the reality that, that exists and you're meant to see. The reason being is that the people or the organisations that kind of create or created the matrix and perpetuate it, um, they have a lot to gain. And a lot of people think it's just based on money, but it goes a lot deeper than that. It actually co goes further, if you've seen some of, some of my other videos, into really um, tapping our energy. Because if you understand that, uh, you know, it's not you, you think it's the time. So you think I've wasted time, as in now I'm this age and I spend all this time working and I do this and I've wasted time. People always talk about, I don't have much time left, now it's time to do this, I've wasted this much time. It sort of exists in our dimension, in, in a way, but in the grander scheme of things, it doesn't exist. What exists is energy, and it's the energy that you're expending in all of these frivolous pursuits that have nothing to do with life or the purpose of your life that results in uh, that energy going somewhere. And people don't sort of tend to ask where that energy is going because if you look at uh, some of the you know, laws of uh, energy and matter and physics and things like that, uh, Energy only transmutes it, it's not like it just disappears. So where does it go? And a lot of the the purpose of the matrix is to tap into that energy so that people don't want money to become more powerful, they want actual energy. You can actually become more powerful. Uh, if you think of some sort of some of the movies that have come out where you know the bad guys, they um, every time they they vanquish one of the good guys, they get their energy and they become bigger and more powerful. It's kind of how things work um, in, in this, but I can cover that more deeply another time, but that's just to sort of set the stage for what the matrix is. So, uh, lacking in being able to deal with it sometimes, caught up in the stress and the fear that it creates. Okay, so it is meant to, it is designed to create stress and fear. It's what, um, it's one of the easiest ways to control an organism, whether you're human or a cat or a whatever. If you think of, uh, you know, the things such as uh, oh, past events like the Holocaust and, and you know, even present day events that are, you see, hear about a lot of the wars and things that go on. Um, it's the fear that drives the ability to control a human. So it's natural to feel that, feel that way because that's what it's designed to create. So the solution, how do you get out of it? Well, the solution is to be mindful, it's to be aware. If you're aware that it's there already, which you obviously are, 
you just need to find a way to go deeper into that to find the stillness within yourself and what I uh, tend to uh, recommend to people is to be able to to find the space where you're able to be an observer of yourself so not just an observer of life and what goes around you but being able to observe yourself and what you'll find when you're able to do that is you'll actually almost be if I'm here now when I'm observing myself I'm almost like back and away from myself watching myself interact with whatever's going on so you find then that if you're speaking you're not really thinking about what you're trying to say it's just flowing through you if you're doing it's kind of like being in the zone it's like if you're doing things or playing an instrument or playing sport just everything flows really easily time doesn't really seem to exist um, you know this isn't a state that people live in all of the time obviously but if you can find yourself being an observer more of the time I think you'll find that I mean stress can't even exist in that state it's, it's literally impossible for stress or fear to exist when you're uh, in that state of mind or a state of being more correctly so again just try to find that stillness and the point that you're able to become an observer of yourself and of your reality and that'll help a lot uh, as far as how to get there just you need to spend more time doing meditation I mean moving on to the next part which you said I've recovered from cancer in the last year through changing my diet and lifestyle it's not surprising but congratulations for doing that it's fantastic uh, it's a fantastic achievement to have um, you know, to have done it, a lot of people are finding out these days more and more so that people are able to do that. A cancer, cancers can be hereditary. There's, there's so, there are some that you can't do much about, at least as far as our understanding goes now. But most of it's brought on by the lifestyle, and not just the lifestyle. It's you need to go a little deep. You need to understand uh, how your ego developed, how your shadows developed, things like that, and that can tell you then. Uh, that can give you an indication as to what's driving your thoughts, what's driving your feelings. And those sorts of things, your emotions, that's what drives your decisions. That drives how you see and, and act and react to things that happen in the world and to you. So that's going to affect then the lifestyle that you choose. And, and all of our lifestyles are a choice. I don't care where you are in the world, how hard your situation is or easy or whatever. Your, your lifestyle is still a choice. How you perceive what happens to you is still your choice. You're conditioned in a certain way to react to certain things, but again, you can uncondition what you can unlearn what you've learned and create a new story or a new life for yourself. So, going back to the point that I was trying to make is that um, it, it's a lifestyle thing. So, these drive the choices and, and the life that you choose to live. You know, it's not an accident that people put junk into their mouth. It's not an accident that people don't get enough sleep. It's not an accident that all these lifestyle factors. Um, you know, start to add up and cause things like cancer. So it's not just uh, I drink, a, a, you know, a certain type of drink or I eat this food, so I got cancer. It's a it's a much broader picture than that. So you've already realised that you, by changing your diet and lifestyle, you've changed. Um, you, you know, you managed to reverse the cancer, which, as I say, is excellent. But it, it goes deeper than that. What you're kind of doing then, you'll find in order to change your diet and lifestyle, you'll have changed your thoughts and feelings, your beliefs and things like that about certain things around you in order for that to happen. So you, I would recommend trying to go a little deeper and deeper and deeper again so that you're actually starting to become aware of these thoughts and feelings, why you have them. Uh, if you look at some of my other videos, you'll, you'll, um, you know, you'll see that I speak about things like art and creativity and ways to... Uh, ways that will reflect your inner um, your inner drives so what's driving these things it may not be obvious like writing things out like my inner demon is this or whatever it is it's just it'll reflect and you'll know subconsciously what it is and it helps to bring that out and for you to start recognizing it being aware of it uh, being aware of it and learning from it so that's how i recommend that um, again just going back to how to deal with it and things like that it's it's painting a broader picture so Basically everything you've written all, can all tie into one uh, larger picture, but I'll, I'll keep going and, uh, and answer some of these other parts. Um, so yeah, I changed my diet and lifestyle. I know that I need to change my mental attitude as well. So I think I just covered that. Um, they, they all tie in together. The mental attitude, uh, again, is what gives rise to the diet and lifestyle and things that you choose. So, so far you're changing that for the better, which is, which is great. Uh, also, I'll just put in now as well that it is a journey. While I say that time and things doesn't exist, it's, um, 
I mean, that's, that's one of the oldest expressions in the book. It's not, it's not the destination, it's the journey. And it really doesn't matter um, what the extraneous circumstances are. It's I have cancer, I'm broke, I live here, I live there, I do this, my job is this, whatever. What matters is what you're gaining from that, how you're experiencing it, how you're learning about how, how life works and how you work as an individual, as a soul, as consciousness, and how that's growing. So that's more the point of a lot of these things. For example, a lot of people talk about change in the world. Oh, we need this to change. This needs to change. That needs to change. And, you know, for, for in a lot of the cases and, and by a lot of accounts, that's certainly, uh, you could argue that that's correct. However, if I was to get punched in the face right now and my nose gets broken, that's a change, right? And then you could say, well, most people would say that that's not a good change, that's a bad change, but... What if that broken nose stopped me from doing some of the things that I'm doing now, allows me the time to reflect on it and realize that those things weren't, for example, let's say I'm boxing or something, or I'm doing something, I'm just doing something that a broken nose is going to stop me from being able to do. So it forces me to uh, stop some of the things that I'm doing in my lifestyle. And then in this period of reflection, I may realize that some things in my life aren't really helping me to grow and I can start to see a new direction or something else new coming up that's going to help me to not necessarily go in the direction that I was going, that my thoughts and my ego and my goals were that I'd set a, a taking me in and it's going to take me in a direction that I previously hadn't considered but now a new world has opened up to me through the way of the broken nose which most people would have said was a bad change. But everything's a change, right? So uh, a lot of these things come up that we probably hadn't anticipated, but it's almost like a gift. It's, it's an invitation for you to start to see another part of the world. So getting cancer, for example, for a lot of people can be the best thing. It's a gift. It's something that's, that's never happened to them. And then once you've gone through that, it allows you, as you've found already, that you can start to awaken to some of these new, uh, new parts of the world, new parts of life that previously you've never seen because you've watched TV, you eat certain foods, you pay attention to media, you, you, follow, uh, you follow along with what a lot of people want you to do. Or, see, a lot of the things that we think we want to do is more what other people want us to do and we're not living our own lives. One of my friends recently has come to the conclusion that she probably shouldn't be at uni. The only reason she really went to uni... See, she always uh, complained... Not complained, but she always says she's jealous of me that I have a lot of free time or she, she's envious of my life because... Everything that I do is something that I want to do. I'm not really doing anything in my life that I'm kind of forcing myself to do. She's always saying she'd love to have more free time and more, just, you know, the ability to do something that she really wants to do. So she's going to uni to get a degree that she doesn't need. And it turns out that she's really only going there because of what other people would think of her if, she's, if she didn't go to university. So, um, and I told her that, I said, you know, a lot of people... They want the free time, or they want this, or they want that, whatever the goal is. But when the opportunity presents itself to actually have that, it's so scary that they might mess it up, or they might not make use of that free time, or whatever, that they'll unconsciously fill it with something that they don't need to do, uh, just so they don't have to sort of fail, or they don't have to deal with that. And that's another part of the matrix. And again, if you just think that, if you were to be brought up, if you were to grow up by yourself or in a very, very small, enlightened uh, tribe or something on an island, a lot of these things that people do in today's society, it wouldn't even cross your mind to do them because it, that would seem at odds with um, the life that you live. Uh, so, part of changing a lot of the mental attitude and, and, and a lot of these things, and I've mentioned this in, in a number of videos, is to Spend as much time as you can in nature. Now, nature is one of those things that uh, the matrix can't really touch. You know, if, if you go and spend some time sitting under a tree and just allowing your hands and feet to, to get into the soil and to feel the earth, to ground yourself, to hug a tree, to put your feet in the water in a stream or swim in the ocean, you know, put your feet in the sand, those sorts of things. That's really helping you to get a grounding in nature. And when you can uh, be present and, and aware in those situations, you gain the full effect from it. I mean, you can go and sit on the beach and if you're thinking about work and kids and this and that and the other, you're not really on the beach. You're, you're wherever your uh, awareness is. So if your awareness and your consciousness and attention is somewhere else, um, then you may as well not be on the beach. You may as well be in that stressful situation because you're drawing the stress from 
an event that's not actually happening and you're bringing it into the present moment. So no matter where you are, you could be on the most best tropical island in the world and you'll still be stressed because you're not present to where you are. So that's probably the biggest piece of advice, of advice that I can give is to be present and to be part of nature and to experience that. To breathe a nice deep breath full of clean fresh air, to, to feel the ground, feel the water and all that sort of stuff as I say. Um, I, as, as much as I can, I'll, I spend time watching the sun too. With the suns, you know, not that far from the horizon, whether it's rising or setting, you can stare directly at the sun. It's, a, it's actually a very, very beneficial thing for you to do. It connects with that, with that sun sort of energy. Uh, by the same token, I also recommend watching the moon. I'm always outside at night watching the stars, watching it when you know, it's not raining. The, the moon, especially love it when once a month the moon rises out of the ocean. Um, the person that wrote this is on the Gold Coast, so I know that you can go and sit on the beach. Uh, round sort of mid to end towards each month, you get those three nights uh, just after sunset where the moon will rise out of the ocean. It's orange and it's beautiful and it's big and it throws its light everywhere. If you can watch that, it's a really special thing to be able to do. And it's really, uh, as you start to get out of the matrix, you'll notice more about the, how the matrix works. For example, You'll go and watch the moon and you'll experience this beauty and this awe of wonder. And then as you're sort of making your way home, you'll see that you'll, you'll go past the units and the houses and you'll just see this, this constant glow from a television set. And it, it's very, very rare that you'll ever see anyone else out on the beach watching the moon rise. Everyone's inside watching TV or doing these things. And, and I mean, everyone has a pursuit. Some of it's not, you know, not worth doing. But generally, they're inside watching TV doing matrix type activities. Uh, also, please hint of any video. Okay, so I always recommend I recommend finding something or someone that you resonate with. Uh, I always recommend people check out Paul Check's videos. Um, the thing with Paul, and I've mentioned this in um, in other videos, in that Freely video on vegans that I did, a lot of these people have huge numbers of views on their videos. But as I say, you can actually find somebody that actually knows what they're talking about, like Paul Check who has only a few hundred or a few thousand views for, for his videos. Uh, and a lot of the time, I think with someone like Paul is that unless you're at a certain uh, stage of development, you're probably not going to resonate with him. You probably It's probably going to sound like gibberish or you'll see some of the things he likes to muck around in his videos and it's quite funny. But some people will look at that and think that he's a wacko. So you've really just got to find someone that you resonate with. Uh, just off the top of my head, if you look up videos... You can probably look up consciousness ones like um, Terence McKenna. Uh, these guys are all mushroom heads, so they they like doing mushroom. They they basically talk about how mu uh, mushrooms have uh, given rise to their new level of consciousness. And I'm going to do a video on drugs and uh, DMT and psilocybin and mushrooms, ayahuasca, things like that. I don't recommend just jumping straight into that, um, as you'll find out when I make the video. But um, Alan Watts, he's excellent. Um, there's quite a few. Just search around. Search around, not so much for people, but for the topics that you want to, um, you know, delve more deeply into and, uh, and and go from there. I actually mentioned Brent Smith in a couple of videos. I think, though, he's taken his videos off and you have to pay to watch them now. I'm not sure, but otherwise look them up. Brent, B-R-E-N-T, Smith. Uh, he's good. I thought I'd actually just show you a couple of books. Um, I don't have that many books at home for... Uh, I've seen it in a couple of videos. I'm not sure if it's like... Uh, some, I'm lucky in that a lot of these things come to me, but I'll often say something to somebody and they'll say, oh, you must have read such and such a book, but I've never even heard of it. A lot of the information that you can get doesn't necessarily have to come from a book or a video. I think it's helpful, especially in order to uh, open your mind to something you haven't considered yet, and then that can then lay a chain reaction of you being able to discover things for yourself once you're aware of some other possibilities in life. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try and keep, I wanted to just put something in here which I'll try to keep short. Uh, so knowledge is not just available in our minds. I think I mentioned this in other videos where a lot of people use their mind as in it's enclosed and they're trying to uh, use their brain to create thought and, um, and knowledge and, and put it out. How the brain actually works, or at least how I've seen it work and in my experience of observing how I've, excuse me, how I've 
um, sort of seen it work is that the brain, when it's open, is more of an antenna. And um, I might actually start showing some of the drawings that I've done in some videos, but what it essentially looks like is we have, you have from your brain an energy wave coming up, and everybody's brain has it. And it's connected to a grid that overlays the earth. You could call it human consciousness. Uh, no, you'd call it, you'd essentially call it the part of consciousness that represents uh, knowledge and, and wisdom. And essentially what it is, is something that we can tap into it at, at, at all the time. It's like this resource, like, like an internet or something that lays above us. And, and all of the things that humans have discovered and thought and all that sort of stuff throughout time essentially sits in this database. And you can tap into it any time. So a lot of the times when you know, I've thought of something and somebody that's written a book has thought of it, blah, blah, blah. We haven't thought of it. It's just come th through us. And this is available to everybody. So a lot of the information that you need or, or the answer to any question you can possibly ask essentially is just waiting to come into you when you're open to it and when you ask the right questions. And by asking, I mean, this generally happens when you're in a state of meditation, meditation or you're lucid dreaming or something to that effect where your subconscious and your consciousness, the line between the two is sort of blurred and they're interacting. And you're able to receive these messages and these visions that can help you to see yourself and, and life itself uh, in a different way. So, I'm going to recommend a couple of books for you. Uh, otherwise, it's a, it's a matter of finding that stillness, as I mentioned at the start of the video, and allowing these things to come to you. Uh, I mentioned Alan Watts to look up for, for videos. Um, my, my housemate really loves listening to him uh, on the internet. This one is Alan Watts Dao. It's spelled T-A-O, but it's pronounced Dao, as in Taoism, the, the Chinese uh, from the Tao Te Ching. This is the Water Course Way. That's an excellent book. Or any book on the 81 verses of the Tao, such as Wayne Dwyer's one, which is called uh, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. That's an excellent book. Um, this one's Eckhart. Um, this one's a new work, but if you read the first one that he wrote, which was um, The Power of Now, that can help you. A lot of people think that that's the answer to everything. It's actually quite simplistic, but it's very valuable because most people aren't even at the stage where they can just be present in any moment and be aware of the colors, the sounds, the feelings, and all that. They're all, their mind's always off in some other place, which, as I said before, means that they're not where they are now, which is where they're meant to be, which is where you're going to get um, inspirations, insights, visions, and answers from. Uh, this book called The Sixth Sense by Stuart Wilde, W-I-L-D-E. That one is, I'm actually reading that at the moment, as I only read a lot, and I've only read not, not much. It takes me ages to get through a whole book, but um, this one can explain to you a little about, from what I've found out so far anyway, um, that's going into explaining how different dimensions and different worlds exist and interplay and how you can access them yourself. This one's about the, the etheric body or the ethereal body which surrounds us and, and this is tapped into again some of the, he talks about some of that that I've seen about the web and the, um, the uh, limitless uh, resource of knowledge and everything that you can get. And as far as just lifestyle which you're already on the right track, this book which I've recommended in a few videos, Paul Check's book, How to Eat, Move and Be Healthy. Um, anybody that comes to work with me as a client, I basically just show them this and if they're not really, have no idea of what's in that book, I tell them just to buy it and go away and read it and come back in a few months because most of what I'll tell person, a person that's going to be in a beginning stage like this is essentially in the book and they're better off spending 30 bucks on the book and just trying to familiarize themselves with that before uh, you know, I work with anyone on it because there's really no point, they're just going to pay me to tell them what's in the book essentially. Um, so that's, those are some resources for you, as I say, you, you need to find, somebody can have the best information in the world, but unless you resonate with um, either them or how they present or whatever, um, that's more important at this stage than the actual information that you're going to be getting. Uh, watch, understand the universe the way you do, alright. Um, yeah, a lot of people seem to think that I have this, um, this super... Uh, understanding of the universe. I mean, I'm. I would say that that's partly true because I'm definitely. I'm, I never feel stressed or fearful or unhappy or out of sorts, out of place, unsure of who I am, what I am, what I'm doing, and all that sort of thing. So, based on just those 
based on that sort of evidence you'd call it, but I'd say that that's partially true. But what it is more, and this is how I explain to some people, if you had, uh, say, 10 of the wisest men ever to live, all women, ever to live, and you had them all around a table, and on the table you put, say, this cat that was like the smartest cat in the world. And these people are all at a level that you are considered to be enlightened or whatever you want to call it. And you place the cat in the middle and the cat's just sitting there. And then each one of those person people had to describe the cat. And if the cat represents reality or the universe or life itself, each one of them would describe it a different way. None of, them's, none of them would be wrong as such because each one of them is describing it from the point of view that they're seeing it. So the way I describe some things and the way I see it or the way... It's not necessarily how I see it either, as I say. It's, it's more what I'm shown. So when I'm in these states that I, I receive these messages or learning the things that I learn just from it coming to me, I'm not a genius. Nobody that comes up with these inventions and whatever, people like to take the credit and we always go, wow, that person's such a genius. They, but really it's come to them from a higher source. So... Um, Rather than trying to try, and that's the other point, trying, it, it's, it, you never want to just try too hard to do anything. It's, it's, you want to allow. Never try hard, do this, do that, go really try and push through to get it to work. It's actually more just the allowing that's going to happen, that's going to make things happen more uh, fruitfully for you. So, the way to, you don't want to, you don't really want to see the universe the way I do. You more want to see the universe the way you do. Because as a human, as a humanity, we're a collective. So it's not necessarily what one person can, can learn to teach the rest of the world, like one prophet that's going to tell the whole world how everything works. It's more about all of us. We're all a piece of the, the one puzzle. So all of us, if we could collectively get our minds together and share our uh, perspectives of that enlightened cat, then we would get the full uh, picture. And that's why it's good to read books and listen to videos because you are getting other people's perspectives and none of them are the truth. They're all a part of a higher truth and nobody can really explain that higher truth to you except yourself because you'll understand it when you see it and you'll see the part of it that you're meant to see and what your consciousness or your soul needs to learn or understand by seeing that. So if you saw what I see, it might not actually be that helpful to you. You need to see what you see. And when you do see it, share it with other people because that helps them to understand another portion of what they're seeing. So I hope that makes sense, uh, but that's the best way I can answer that. Uh, I'd love to grasp the multiverse and many other things more clearly, like how the universe is made from love, how we can be in one place at one time. So I think I just answered that really. You, you kind of need to find that for yourself. And don't be, the way, the way to do it, and this is the way that if a client's coming to me to increase their, uh, their uh, one of their lifts or, you know, their speed over 100 meters or they're trying to lose weight, you need to have in mind what you want to achieve, for sure, but don't focus on that outcome. As soon as you focus and you get attached to that outcome, you're allowing you're not allowing yourself to be uh, focused too much on the process. So you want to be dedicated to the process of doing anything, but not attached to the outcome. The outcome will be what it's going to be. Just dedicate yourself to the process. So rather than trying to dedicate yourself to uh, seeing how everything's made from love or seeing the multiverse or anything like that, or, or even just understanding it, dedicate yourself to the process of being able to understand it, which means... Uh, you know, eating organic foods, uh, not putting toxins and things into yourself which can block you from, from experiencing these things, um, uh, finding the stillness in yourself, find, finding quiet time. Not enough people find enough quiet time in their day and I recommend at least an hour of just quiet time for you. You can count watching a movie or a television but it doesn't really count as much as doing something like uh, working in practice, a meditation, some Tai Chi, some art, uh, something creative that's just helping you to ground yourself and be creative and or just still and, and allow these things to come in. So dedicate yourself to the process of allowing that to happen. Don't try to dedicate yourself to um, to it happening, um, if that makes sense. It should do because it's a simple, simple concept. Uh, but 
simple and easy are two different things. It is a simple concept. Most people don't find it super easy, but hopefully if you're already on the type of path that's leading you to ask these sorts of questions, you, you'll grasp that better than a lot of people. Uh, I guess a really quick example of how we can be in more than one place at once, if you consider that thoughts are energy, and energy is energy itself is matter, or can be matter. So thoughts are real things, and this has been proven a number of times over in a lot of different fields, the way thoughts can uh, affect the crystallization of water, uh, the, um, the behavioral characteristics of plants, a um, number of different studies into how thoughts are actual really things, and, and I'm sure that you, you can understand that already. Uh, and what I'm going to tie that into is dreams. And a lot of people don't really actually understand dreams fully. There's nobody that's really come out and explained completely what dreams are, why we dream, and, and things like that. Even though, you know, we have covered, uh, we can explain some of that, just not all of it. And if you, the uh, camera cut out there, so you probably get a new one, but, you know, what are you going to do? So as far as dreams go, uh, while you're asleep, you're in your own dream, but you can talk to other people and quite often this happens and they say, hey, you were in my dream last night and, oh, and you can hear it from a few people, right? So that's just one simple way that you can comprehend that you can be in more than one place at once. So um, anyway, that wraps up the video. Uh, I hope I answered your questions uh, in a way that you can actually understand. Um, if you didn't, of course, just write in if you need clarification on anything that I've covered today. And anyone else, if you have questions along these lines or for anything at all, uh, feel free to write in. Uh, one thing that I'll leave you with, I guess, is the most important way that you're going to be able to get out of the matrix, goes for anyone, is to think for yourself and question everything. Those two things. Question everything, think for yourself. Do those things and you'll find yourself getting further and further out of the matrix every time. So I'll leave it there. Uh, thanks again for watching. I hope I helped in some way and uh, I'll see you in the next